market was chopping around in technical trade. World ending stocks, though, crept up to 273.5 million tons, and that was for old crop supplies. So that's a look at the Ice Futures Canada and Chicago markets for Friday morning, July 13th. In Winnipeg for Market Farm, I'm Dave Sims. Disc Bind Center Pivot Disc Mower Conditioners give you closer cutting and faster dry down. Butler Farm Equipment in Fort St. John can tell you more about New Holland's design features like the Momax 2 Cutter Bar. It features large discs that cut more closely with less cutter bar tilt and the wide dry conditioning systems that are 125 inches wide for consistent dry down and maximum hay quality. Visit Butler Farm Equipment in Fort St. John and ask about the Center Pivot Disc Bind Disc Mower Conditioners from New Holland. The opinions expressed during this show do not represent those of this station. If you've missed any of this show, you can follow the podcast at energeticcity.ca. Now, an in depth look at the news and information shaping our community. This is Trev Talks with your host, Trevor Boland. Welcome to Trev Talks. We are uh, back for our third segment. We've got a special segment happening today. We're going to uh, we're going to be looking at a community that is is equally as important um, as Fort St. John is um, right now. In the first few years, it might even be more so. Um, but it is Kitimat. So we're looking at Kitimat because we're going to spend the next couple of segments on Canada LNG. Uh, joining us today, we have a businessman, realtor, um, Graham. He's out of Kitimat. He's been in uh, Kitimat for 26 years, 27 years. Um, this is our look at the ground. What is happening on the ground in Kitimat? Hey, Graham, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. So we, we were talking a little bit before we got started, just just about what's happening on the ground. Give us a, give us an idea. I mean, we see it in the media, and and you know the latest story was this this fifty unit building that was built for Shell that sat vacant for two years is now full. The parking lot's full. Uh, there's activity. There's buzzing. There's going around. What is it like on the streets of Kitimat right now? You definitely see a lot more uh, faces around that you you haven't seen before. With Kitimat being such a small town, you kind of know everybody. So when somebody comes in uh, from out of town, you definitely notice it. So we've seen a lot more of that. Uh, that one building you mentioned, um, it, it's actually owned by the Heisla, and the whole building is leased to Shell. I've heard for 10 years. Um, and that is the first of three of those buildings that are going to be built. There is going to be two more built um, on a final investment decision by LNG Canada. Wow. So, so there's upwards of about 150 units being built on 10-year leases. So, I mean, that really gives you an indication of, of what's going to happen in the Kitimat market over that 10 years when they need 150 units upon this happening. Yeah, so that's just a very small part of actually the houses they do have. They have a whole bunch of new built homes uh, that come with leases as well that they have for for their upper management. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that are that are definitely happening, and houses uh, that had these leases on them are starting to get vehicles in front of them. Um, so it's definitely an interesting time. They've had these leases in place for a few years just because of. Uh, they they did anticipate moving forward a few years ago there, and obviously market conditions didn't allow that to happen. But, uh, yeah, so they've held these leases. The buildings were empty for the most part uh, for the past few years, and now things are starting to happen again. There's a 500-person camp that uh, also has sat dormant for about a year and a half, two years. Just uh, two weekends ago, the July 1st weekend, they opened the doors back up on that camp to get it ready for people. Um, there's a, a Horizon North camp that is uh, doing some groundwork. They said with three months' notice, they could have a thousand beds put in. Wow, that is unreal. So, so and I, mean, I like the idea of, of Kitimat and Fortune John because I mean, if people do know, I mean, Kitimat, Kitimat is the downstream. Fortune John is the upstream. So, with with this project, with this monster project, Canada LNG that that we've all been talking about for years, but you know, the last couple of weeks seems to be a lot of conversation because it's getting so close to this financial investment decision, which we are all hoping for and all waiting for. Um, as the upstream to the downstream, you guys, you guys will tend to be a bit ahead of us in this market because I mean, of course, we need to get 
get, you know, the pipeline needs to go in and, and the site needs to be built um, before, you know, we really start drilling for gas and doing exploration. What's the site looking like? Like, give us an idea. How far is this site from, from the downtown and, and, and have you seen it? Um, you know, we've heard word that, that they've, they've ramped back up site prep and, and getting ready for construction on that end. What's it look like when you're, you know, standing on the, on the, the ridge of town looking over this site? The site's just basically a big open field. It was a methanol plant owned by Methanex, uh, which shut down in the very, very early 2000s. So about, uh, what, eight years ago, the whole plant was dismantled and removed. So they did, like, that was, uh, it was bought by a Chinese company, the methanol plant was. So that was when site prep kind of started. And then throughout the time, it's just been cleared and cleared. Last year, tanks were were taken down, all the underground services were removed. So the plant site now is just a massive field. Um, and then the campsite that LNG Canada has is just a huge field as well. It was Rio Tinto's uh, campsite when they were doing their modernization. And they, so Shell took it over now and cleared probably uh, three times as much as was already cleared for Rio Tinto's camp for theirs to house their workers. And they're expecting, uh, I've heard between 4,500 and 6,000 workers in that camp for Shell. Just in the one camp, 4,500 to 6,000 workers. Yeah, so and that's not including, like I talked about the Horizon North camp for 1,500. There's a Civio camp for 500. So those two are contract camps. Shell's camp itself is supposed to have a very substantial amount of people. And it's all basically kind of cleared. There's a few machines working, but it's, it's just ready to go. If the if the FID is made, it seems like they're uh, in the position to to just start you know putting things back in. That's amazing. So, so I just I mean I'm not a math guy, um, but I was just doing quick math as you're talking about these camps. So we're, so we're talking upwards of, of between eight and ten thousand people that are becoming that are going to be coming on with this project in Kitimat. Yeah, and that's just LNG Canada. There is still Kitimat LNG, which is Chevron and Woodside, and they are they haven't stopped moving forward. They're definitely not moving as quickly as LNG Canada. I would not expect an FID this year and probably not even next. They said they're looking roughly for like a 2027 startup, um, but that in itself, uh, with LNG Canada having all those beds and, and camp space available, if Chevron comes online at any point, during LNG Canada's construction phase, you've just got an even more astronomical number uh, affecting a town that's 7,500 to 8,000 people. Um, you have almost twice as many camp beds as you do people in town. That's crazy. That, and that was going to be my next question is what is the size of Kitimat? Like if, if you've got that sort of population, is it is it widespread? Is it a pretty tight-knit little community? Is there, is there you know, the old-fashioned downtown core like we see in, in 14 John and, and Dawson and, and the areas in the Northeast? Kitimat is an extremely unique little community. We don't have big sprawling properties. There are no farms. Um, on average, the, the absolute largest land size you can kind of buy is about two acres. Um, one acre is, is a, a large piece of property for Kitimat. We're very unique in that way for being so remote. But uh, So we are a very compact little town. Um, five minutes from anywhere driving. You could start on one side of town and make it to the other. Uh, no matter where you're going, within five five to seven minutes, if you hit two, if you hit uh, one of the red lights in town, you might take a little longer. But that's it. So we're <laughs> nice. very close. Um, so any impact will have a direct impact to the, the the entirety of the town, just because of how actually small the land area of Kitimat is. Yeah, that's amazing. So what I'm uh, what I'm thinking is um, boundary expansion. So is there any way for you guys to do a boundary expansion? Like I know Fort St. John's just undergone two, and and part of the thing, I mean, if if I think back to about three or four years ago, you know, Kitimat boomed and Fort St. John boomed upstream and downstream, and then you know the the announcements um, got put on hold and the FIDs got put on hold and and you know, you guys went through a, a tough market. We went through a tough market. And and what are your, I mean, can you guys grow? I mean, are you anticipating, what are you anticipating for real estate increases? Like, are you looking at, you know, 15% probably this year, upwards of 20 next year? What kind of, uh, what kind of numbers are we looking at? It's, that's a super difficult question to answer because in some, in some uh, property types, we've already seen an increase of uh, upwards of 75%. 75% this, this year? This year, in the past about four months, 
when the provincial government made the, the announcement for the tax breaks for LNG projects, if they, if they made the FID by the end of November, um, the day after that announcement was made was when we saw the market shift dramatically. <laughs> nice, yeah. Um, and like I said, some property types for the lower end, uh, the bottom end of the market, just three bedroom, one bath bungalows have jumped from like 150, 160. We're now selling them into the 250, 60, 280 type wow, thing. Wow, wow. Um, $100,000 in the last three months. Yeah. And others, you know, it's just the desirability, how fast they move. Uh, four to six months wasn't an unreasonable time period on the market uh, prior to four months ago. And now, uh, last week, I was talking to one of the other realtors. They listed four properties, and three of them got offers in the first week. That's incredible. Um, that is amazing. We're, uh, we're going to flip to a quick commercial break, and then uh, we'll be right back. So stay with us, folks, and we will, uh, we will wrap up and, uh, and find out a little bit more about what we can expect here in Fort St. John. One man in the heart of Fort St. John on a mission. Uh, Jesse, that's been done before. Oh, all right. In a faraway land. Oh, yeah, that's also been done. And you've just wasted like 15 seconds of your ad time. Just be uh, normal. Oh, okay. Hey, my name is Jesse Lambert, owner of JD Knives and Custom Works, Fort St. John's very own custom knife shop. We make leather goods, we offer sharpening services, and of course, make custom knives. Find us on Facebook and at jdknives.ca to find out more. Rated A for awesome. Oh, for crying out loud. It's all up to you. You talking to me? What should we play next? Call 250-787-2222. Or text 250-800-2360. Brought to you by Wendy. A chocolate frosty or a vanilla frosty? That's one of summer's toughest questions. But when it's only 99 cents, why not try both? The 99 cent frosty only at Wendy's. Over the years, Bailey Helicopters has steadily grown to become one of the most trusted and respected rotary wing operators in the north. Whether it's oil and gas, hydro, mining, or remote camp support, cargo hauling, or crew transport, Bailey Helicopters offers a wide range of services to northern BC and Alberta. We also offer pipeline leak detection, fire suppression, aerial surveys, and right-of-way inspections. A full list of our services can be found at baileyhelicopters.com. For the highest level of safety and performance, call Bailey Helicopters, truly above the rest. I don't know about you, but when I wear clothes from Crooked Corner Clothing, everyone is always asking where I shop. That's because Crooked Corner Clothing carries a unique selection of men and ladies clothing everyone simply loves. And most of the awesome brands are 100% Canadian, like Tentree, Ecumenic, Plenty Human Wear, Quality, Saks, West Coast Tees, and more. Crooked Corner Clothing, making Fort St. John look stylish every day on 101st Ave and also on Facebook and Instagram. Looking for new eyewear or sunglasses? Save time and money when you visit Merwin Optical, Fort St. John's premier sight testing and eyeglass boutique serving you since 1987. Glenn and Sneha, both licensed dispensing opticians, will take time to help you choose your eyewear or sunglasses that fit your needs, lifestyle, as well as your budget. Merwin offers same-day sight testing for adults 19 through 64 and one-hour service on most prescriptions. Year-round savings of 50% on second sets makes it easy to get both your eyewear and sunglasses at once. Direct billing to insurance plans for latest updates like us on facebook and instagram how's it going good the toilet is in the shower looks great and after i head to emco for more pipe and fittings that sink and faucet is going to be ready to go you'll find everything at emco oh absolutely i even saw some ideas for a second bathroom <laughs> let's get this one finished first at emco corporation they have everything you need for your next plumbing project pipe and fittings for drainage and water lines water treatment solutions plus a complete line of sinks faucet toilet showers tubs and more emco corporation your plumbing and kitchen experts on the alaska highway at United Rentals, they know all those summer jobs around the house can't be done all by yourself. So they offer an expanded fleet of small tools and equipment for sale or to rent to help you get the job done. Stop into United Rentals today and check out their lineup of mini smooth drum rollers, mini excavators, skid steers, push around lifts, power augers, pumps, breakers from handheld electrics to skid steer mounted units, and lots more. For full details, call United Rentals at 250-262-3005. Serenity, tranquility, peace. The HB Health and Body Wellness Spa is known for providing all of the above, and they're looking for amazing new team members who can do the same. The HB Health and Body Wellness Spa is seeking a certified esthetician and massage technician to join their energetic team. 
If you think you're the right fit, drop your resume off at the Hairbin and ask to speak with Lorraine or Marnie. The HB Health and Body Wellness Spa, located in the Northgate Mall. Voted Best Spa and Best Estheticians in the 2017 People's Choice Awards. Watch this show live on Facebook or download the podcast at energeticcity.ca. This is Trev Talks with Trevor Bolin. Welcome back to Trev Talks. We're uh, just going to wrap up with uh, with Graham before we get on to our next guest. But Graham, off air, we were talking a little bit about an, an analyst that was uh, it was either in the Bloomberg or the Golden Mail. Tell us a little bit about what this analyst figures as far as a, a timeline on the financial investment decision. Yeah, so the his prediction was he was looking at uh, about a second or third week of September. Um, so Shell themselves have said they're looking late third quarter or into a fourth quarter uh, final investment decision timeline. Uh, we kind of spoke uh, Patronus buying in there late. I think kind of pushed things back slightly just to get you know all the ducks in a row and paperwork lined up and everything. But uh, you know the the provincial government uh, timelines for the the tax breaks for the LNG plants they have set a timeline of no later than the end of November. So you know within reason you can reasonably expect this year uh, it's either you know a go or not, and it looks really good for it to move forward with all the work they're doing, all the infrastructure that's being set up, and all the, the contracts being handed out. Um, they are all positive, they're pending positive final investment decision, but, you know, just the amount of contracts going out uh, is massive. So, it you know, it looks like they're getting all their ducks lined up so that when they go, uh, it'll be it'll be just you know boots on the ground and all the all the trucks moving forward type thing. That's so awesome. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, this this fall or or potentially early winter, we should see things going. Beautiful. Okay. Well, we will. Uh, what we'll do is we'll follow back up with you probably around that that September thirtieth date or you know I mean that's the earliest that we're probably going to see this uh, financial investment decision. So it'll be it'll be good to see because we'll be able to probably share some of those same stories as far as the activities happening here that that you guys are are doing down there. So thank you very much for being on the show. I wish you guys uh, very much success um, leading up to this financial investment decision, and we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks Good luck so much. With, uh, upstream there as well. You betcha we will. Thanks again. Coming okay. up next, we've Bye. got uh, we've got the mayor of Kitimat joining us uh, here shortly, and we will uh, take a farther look at um, what is happening as far as uh, the city side, the financial side, and, and what kind of negotiations or relations um, so far that have, that have taken place to give us an idea of, of what's going to be happening on this. So join us, uh, join us here shortly back, and we'll have the mayor of Kitimat online. Up here in the peace country, we sometimes need to remember how fortunate we are to have access to such vast areas of wilderness and for hunting seasons that last for several months. For many of us, hunting has been a pastime for generations and we hope it will be for generations to come. Be grateful for these opportunities and remember it is up to all of us to respect and conserve this resource. Enjoy the hunting in all its facets, the planning and preparation, the interaction and pursuit, and the bonding and camaraderie you share with friends and family. And when you need supplies for your next adventure, come to back country where we help you enjoy the great outdoors at complete safety services they specialize in you guessed it safety they provide field safety advisors and certified medics with fully equipped mtcs and trucks that are maintained to the highest standards they can prepare companies for their cor certification write safety programs manage isn and comply works not only that but complete safety services now offers traffic control hot shotting and pilot car services complete safety services striving to ensure a safe and healthy working environment on 100 in Fort St. John and online at completesafety.ca. So you heard St. John Advertising is under new ownership, right? Well, when Kaylee and Julie bought it last spring, all records, history, and logos came with it. So if I had hats embroidered years ago... They have your files. What about my team jersey from last season? They have your files. My annual company awards? Yep, still there. So the hoodies I ordered? Yes, they have your files. Whether it's been a year, six months, or a decade since your last order, SJA Promo has your files. Stop by today on 100th Avenue East beside Casey's Pub or online at sjapromo.ca. Who doesn't like to save money? Exactly, we all do. So get to Marcy's Bright Ideas for their summer sale with 30 to 75% off the entire store. Huge savings on everything. Marcy's Bright Ideas on 100th, Facebook, and at marcysbrightideas.net. It's more than just lighting. 
This sports booster brought to you by Can Do Oil Field Services. For your upcoming pipeline or facility construction project, let Can Do help you finish the job within your deadline with safe and efficient working conditions. Can Do Oil Field Services, visit CanDoOilField.ca. Now, a sports boosters update. The North Peace Justice Society presents the first annual bocce tournament August 11th and 12th at Kin Park. The minimum prize value is at $200. Registration fee is at $50 per team. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Contact Katie at the North Peace Justice Society at 250-263-9202 or email restorativejustice at telus.net. Send us your sports info, sports at moosefm.ca or by fax, 263-9749. Sports Boosters on Moose FM. If you're looking for hassle-free internet services, call the Peace Region Internet Society today. With coverage throughout most of the Peace, PRIS can get you connected quickly without the hassle of contracts or bundles. Visit pris.ca or call 1-800-768-3311 for more information. Now, a Sports Boosters update. Fast, efficient, top quality work. That's the reputation PIMS production equipment has, and they live up to it. Stop by and see for yourself and check out their huge inventory of parts. For the best in instrumentation, electrical, and IT, see PIMS production equipment. PIMS.ca. Send us your sports info, sports at moosefm.ca or by fax, 263-9749. Sports Boosters on Moose FM. Our community first. This is Trev Talks with your host, Trevor Bolin. Welcome back to our uh, second segment of Trev Talks right here in this rainy day in Fort St. John. Um, we have got on the line with us uh, the mayor of Kitimat, uh, Mayor Phil Gurmuth. Um, he is joining us from Kitimat this morning. Phil, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the show this morning. Oh, you're welcome, Trevor. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, no worries. Well, you know what this this week was dedicated towards Kitimat being you know the downstream of Canada LNG and and helping people understand that um, you know Fortune John being the upstream, we're not we're not far behind you guys. So as as you know, you start to see activity. Our activity is a little bit delayed, but um, you know, in speaking with we were speaking with a uh, a realtor and a businessman in, in Kitimat um, just before you, Graham. Um, you know, he was giving us an idea of of the sort of increases that the market seen upon um, announcements from the provincial government. And, and what like that what um on the on the city side of things and i mean as, as the mayor you're, you're two term on on council um you know one is council and one is the mayor and, and of course you know always an election coming up this fall um what what sort of happenings are, are going on in kitimat like give us kind of a an on the ground shot of of what it's like right now so uh, you know there, there's definitely you're seeing companies move into town um construction companies etc and uh, you're seeing you know some of the buildings being uh, taken up that were empty before. You're seeing a lot of heavy equipment being moved into town, and holy, uh, also a whole lack of white pickup trucks. <laughs> All company trucks driving around. You betcha. That's uh, and and you you had an interview here earlier in the week, and I think they had tied it in towards this this first building that that had sat empty for so long, and and now it's it's full. Um, and in your interview, you were you were very very positive. Um, from, of this project going forward, and, and and I like that because you see it happening, right? So we sit back in Fort St. John, and and we've lived through the promised land, and and it didn't happen, and, and you guys were side by side with us, and you know we all boomed together, and then we all kind of dropped off the map together, and, and and now we're back in this again. So you know how positive are you that that this project, Canada LNG, and its proposal um, is is going to go forward? So nothing is a hundred percent until they make that decision, but Definitely. boy. I'd say it's easily in the 90s somewhere. It's Everything has been falling into place for them. Uh, you know, the provincial government went and uh, gave them the preferred electricity rate, took out the LNG tax. Basically, the provincial government went and gave them a level playing field to be able to compete with other jurisdictions around the world. So now they, the can, they can compete with the U.S. Exactly. The federal government is, uh, you know, still looking at the tariffs thing. It's just a timing issue right now. And uh, so we, even as a community, we did for the first time in our history... Uh, we gave a tax revitalization deal to LNG Canada to give them 10 years of guaranteed taxes. So the first five years at a prorated basis of construction, and then for their first five years of operation, a guaranteed rate. So, you know, the, the joint venture partners are looking for certainty, right? And uh, so we wanted to do our part uh, to give them that. So we came up with uh, the deal, worked with them on it, and they were very happy with it. So That's incredible. Uh, so that's something, that, that's something that's gone on this, this go-around that didn't happen last time. 
Exactly. That's actually really impressive. So when, when you know, and that's people's, you know, we see the comments on Facebook and you, you see the comments on, on any story and they say, you know, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. We've been here before. But, but one thing people aren't understanding is we've, we've never been this close. We've never had, obviously, Kitimat, you know, negotiating for, for benefits for the companies, the, the provincial government giving more benefits that have ever been offered. And, and, you know, the feds hopefully doing their part. So that, that's probably what brings in kind of that, that low to mid 90s percent certainty of this project for you? Yeah, even when uh, even when I first got elected to mayor in 2014, uh, even talking with LNG Canada then, still they had said, we're hoping for our FID in the, in the round of 2018. So, uh, you know, I know there was a lot of hype in the province. Oh, there's going to be 18 of these things and it's happening right away. Credit to LNG Canada. They have never over-promised anything. They're always so careful, uh, you know, not to, to dis... So they've actually... You know, it's basically going right online from what they've told us. So I know there's been others out there that thought everything was going to be built already, but they've always been pretty realistic on it. And I think this has really been their their major date to get things, uh, to make that announcement is, you know, hopefully between August and October before the election would be even more awesome. Yeah, exactly. Well, before the election, and they've only got until November 30th before their benefits run out on the provincial side. So, exactly. you know, and, and I'm hearing the same thing on this side. It's kind of that August to September sort of an idea or August to uh, to October, which which lands us in September. Give us an idea. I mean, Fort St. John, Fort St. John has boomed over the years. And I mean, we've had big booms. And But give us an idea on, on the city side. Like, like, what's it? I mean, have you guys been prepping for this? I mean, you could have upwards of, of eight to 10,000 people in your community. Have you, have you been prepping? Um, infrastructure for this have you been prepping like what's the prep time been on this and and are you going to be ready for it are you ready for ten thousand people coming to your community oh we're absolutely right i mean and you have to give a lot of credit you know a city can do so much but when you have a proponent like an lng canada who has put so much effort uh they've expended so many resources both in people both in people's times and uh funds trying to get workers ready uh you know funding apprenticeships uh funding scholarships and working with every community organization we have to ensure that when their project goes ahead, there's going to be as few negative effects as possible. Now, of course, Kitimat, too, is a town that was built by industry. It's the only reason we're here. So, you know, in general, we're very supportive of industry and economic development. Um, our slogan is Kitimat, a marvel of nature and industry. So, oh, nice. Uh, you know, as much as we support industry and stuff, we're also very protective of our environment. Well, you've uh, got this beautiful, huge beautiful fishing, place right? Up there. Yeah, and yeah. big, big got, fishing industry as well for tourism and, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, fishing, hunting, ATVing, dirt biking. There's a ski hill one hour away. Um, there's just so much opportunity here. And, uh, you know, many people have come here over the years. Oh, I'm only going to be there for a couple of years just going for work. Then they get here and they see it, and it's like, wow. <laughs> Sounds what like, a great sounds place. like so Fort St. John. Here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. That's what I said. My grandpa in 1926 said he was coming for two years, and here I am. <laughs> so I like it. And, and, I, and we talked earlier, and I've never been to Kitimat, but I, I'm going to be coming over this summer. I'm going to bring the boys over, and we're going we're gonna to check out your, uh, your beautiful town and, and kind of be able to see. And what I like is I like a, a grounds-on approach. I, I, don't, I don't like to read in the media what's happening and, and, and try to piece this stuff together. So I, I love the fact that, that you're able to let us and help us understand. I imagine you are you are probably um, nonstop phone calls as as the mayor of a of a small community. You probably act as a, as an economic development officer as well in that community. I, I know that that happens in a lot of small towns. Um, what kind of dealings with like what kind of investors do you have that are looking at developing outside of of just you know Canada LNG or just industry, but but to try to meet this housing crunch that you're going to be in? So we just went through, of course, the Rio Tinto modernization. So during that, a lot of the vacant properties were already bought up and there were big plans there, as every many investors were thinking that LNG was going to go quicker than it did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, there, there's already a lot of them already have their proposals in. Some of them have their permits as to what they're allowed to do already. Um, but LNG Canada on their own, too, for the housing issue, uh, they've work, been working with the Heisla Nation and they built the Heisla Center, which is, uh, I believe it's over 40 condos, beautiful, beautiful unit. Uh, right where our old hospital used to be and basically the center of town. And uh, then they've also, um, on Baxter Landing, they have a whole bunch of uh, condos in there that they've contracted. They've had houses built already in two different subdivisions in the town. So as I say, you know, yes, we are prepared for it, largely in part because they are just an amazing proponent to work with. And, uh, you know, it is very important to them and, and the joint venture partners that, you know, hey, they want to make sure that uh, that they're seen as doing the right thing and, that's really great to see, you know. Um, it is. As a corporate is. citizen, they are truly setting an example of how to get it right. And they've been doing it since day one. 
That's actually really good to hear. I mean, I, I know when Shell came to Fort St. John and, and opened up an office here and they, you know, this was, this was years ago and, and they hadn't been here for years. It was, it's always the question of, of, are they going to be a good corporate citizen? And I mean, that goes with any, any industry that's moving into town. So to hear on your end that the amount of, of, you know, contributions that they've made and the way that they've, they've looked at this as far as what your needs are. Um, Cause you know, we're going to have, we're going to have some similar issues in Fort St. John. We're not going to have the construction proponent, but as far as, you know, the 20 years of, of drilling and exporting um, that they're going to need to follow through with. I mean, that's going to come from us um, to you. Yep, exactly. So, and it's great that, you know, there's a lot of good relationships that have been built between the communities over the years, upstream, downstream, midstream, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you see, and, and LNG Canada has done such a great job with the project, you know, that uh, there is really, besides one little very small house at a First Nations that's against the pipeline, you know, you see the widespread support. You just don't see that on projects. And, uh, you know, from our point, you know, LNG Canada has just done such a good job. They really do deserve to have this go through. Um, it, it's just unprecedented in their the level of engagement in the community, First Nations, and uh, just what an outstanding corporate citizen they are to this community and uh, how proud we are to have them as a part of our community. Wow, and looking great. forward to that relationship for the next, you know, 40, 50 years. Oh, yeah, no, she's yeah. long-term. Yeah. And it's going to be long-term with all of us. And, and I know, yeah. you know, even between even between Fort St. John and Kitimat, um, you know, we're, we're probably... You know, you guys, you guys started to get a lot of activity and a lot of, of, of eyes on you um, kind of when the province rolled out their, their, uh, their plan. Now, you know, you've taken it steps farther and, and made sure that it was a benefit inside the community. Um, I, I suspect Fort St. John's probably going to be in a, a very similar boat. Um, you know, upon the announcement of the of the FID, um, you know, only being probably six months after your guys' first end of it was. So it's going to be it's going to be very, very close for us as well. Absolutely. No, well, that's great. It was uh, it was great chatting with you. I look forward to a lot of years of Kitimat and Fort St. John um, and, and everybody along that trail, right? Whether it's whether it's that pipeline aspect or whether it's the, the exploration or, or the, you know, the facility and that you guys have. And, and I look forward to coming and visiting the community this year. Um, and what we'll probably do is we're going to have you back on the show. I think once we uh, once we get that financial investment decision happening um, and uh, we'll touch base and see how things are going with the, the crazy world of Kitimat at that time. Excellent, Trevor. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. You have yourself a great day, and we will uh, talk to you soon. You too, sir. Thanks. Bye-bye. That wraps up our second segment of uh, Trev Talks here for our third episode. So if you were uh, if you were curious on Kitimat, you can check it out online. There's a ton of information or, or do what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go down there and, and take a trip this summer and maybe take in a little bit of this fishing that they're talking about and some some of the tours and sites that they see. But it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very, very close relationship that uh, is happening between Kitimat and Fort St. John. So when we're looking at our market and we're looking at what we can expect in the coming months, as you heard, Kitimat, Kitimat started to actually really undergo some craziness as soon as that announcement from the provincial government came out um and and we've heard word that they're you know mid mid 90 percent certainty that the, the fid's happening sometime between uh between august and october so i think that's uh that's a september for me so if i was uh if i was a betting man as uh, as the mayor of kitimat said in one of his interviews um i would probably be betting on september 30th that we're going to see some activity so thank you very much have a great weekend and we will talk to you next friday on uh, trev talks you've been listening to trev talks a weekly talk show about Fort St. John and the North Peaks. Legend says many years ago,